Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to share with you detailed test results of Huanan GX99 TFQ motherboard from AliExpress. But before I go into the test results, I would like to mention that such detailed testing is taking lots of time. I also need to buy different equipment, such as different CPUs, different SSDs, different GPUs, and different memory modules. My reviews are not sponsored in any way, and I am not getting paid from Huanan Ji or from any other AliExpress seller. Thus, I would like to ask you to appreciate my work, and if you use my information in your articles, in your videos, or in any other way, please also provide a link to my YouTube videos. Probably you have already guessed it, but Huanan Ji X99 TFQ is a cheaper version of Huanan Ji X99 TF. Overall, the motherboard specification is very similar to the original X99TF, but TFQ uses desktop Q87 chipset. This chipset does not have as many SATA 3.0 ports, but we are still having the same amount of USB 3.0 ports. Also, with the desktop chipset, we do not have any option to overclock unlocked CPUs such as i7, 5820K, or any other Xeons which have unlocked multiplier. As always, you will find all the technical details, including all the detailed test results, in my slides by the end of this video, but right now I will quickly go through the slides and mention you the most important details about Huanan G X99 TFQ. Let's start with the M.2 slot specification. The motherboard has two M.2 slots for the SSD drives. The first one is the PCI Express 3.0 X4, the one which is closer to the CPU, it is connected to the CPU. And the second one is also a PCI Express, but this one is 2.0 and it's connected to the chipset. Thus, if you have M.2 SATA SSD, it's not going to work in either of these slots. Then we also get an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth expansion cards. Wi-Fi will be working out of the box, but to be able to use Bluetooth, you need to enable USB connectivity for the M.2 slot. On the motherboard you will find two jumpers which are switching USB connectivity from a front panel header to the M.2 slot. Huanan G X99 TFQ has two USB 2.0 headers for the front panel, thus it's not a big deal to disable one of them to get Bluetooth connectivity through the M.2 slot. It's important to mention that there are two jumpers and you need to flip both of them. It's not that one is going there and the other one is staying in another position. Just like the original X99TF, X99TFQ has three PCI Express X16 slots. First and the second one are connected as PCI Express X16, and the last one is connected as PCI Express X4. This slot has a shared connectivity with the M.2 slot. With the original X99 TFQ motherboard, it is possible to adjust PCI Express buffication settings in the BIOS, disable M.2 slot, and get PCI Express X8 connectivity for the last PCI Express X16 slot. Unfortunately, with X99 TFQ, that doesn't work. We still have the PCI Express buffication options in the BIOS, but if I enable X8 instead of X4 X4, all X8 lanes are getting connected to the M.2 slot. Obviously, we can't use 8 lanes through the M.2 slot, and in this configuration, the last PCI Express X16 slot is completely useless. Just like any other Chinese X99 and X79 motherboard, X99 TFQ still does not know how to adjust the fan speed of 3-pin fans. If you would like to use the smart fan function or to be able to adjust rotation speed of your fan, you have to use a 4-pin PWM fan connected to the CPU fan header. Everything else is working at 100% speed. Nevertheless, X99 TFQ supports sleep mode, which is a plus. Like many other Chinese motherboards, X99 TFQ is coming with a BIOS that does not have RAM timings options unlocked. Luckily, we already have modified BIOS available on GitHub that unlocks these settings. Additionally, I can mention that X99 TFQ is producing loud and very annoying beep on boot. It's not that big of a deal because you can always put some glue into the speaker or just break it, but it's rather annoying. VRM or CPU power delivery system is another very important point of all Chinese X79 and X99 motherboards. Luckily for us, X99 TFQ inherits the power delivery system from the original X99 TF. And that means that the VRM is rather decent. I have tested with the Xeon Fi 2696 V3 using ADA64 stress test for 30 minutes. 
The CPU was Turbo Boost unlocked and I have used minus 70, minus 50, minus 50 millivolts under volting or CPU voltage adjustment. In this configuration, after this test, I have got somewhere around 60-65 degrees Celsius if I measure with an external laser thermometer. Lately, LJ1200 and LJ1700 motherboards are going down in price, the CPUs such as Core i3 and Core i5 are getting more and more attractive. Thus, I think that people who are paying extra for Chinese X99 motherboard are looking to build some sort of a home server where server features are important and where you would want to have uh, uh, lots of cheap ECC registered memory and probably lots of PC Express lanes. That's why I have spent quite some time testing several different server features. Let's start with ECC memory. Many Chinese motherboards work with ECC memory, but the ECC memory correction is actually not enabled. With X99 TFQ it's not a problem, ECC mode works just as desired. I have also tested PCI Express buffication and PCI Express GPU pass-through using Proxmox. These features are also working with no problems. Here I also have to mention that when I try to install Proxmox with the Turbo Boost unlocked BIOS, it simply locks. It does not proceed with the installation and I was not able to figure out how to fix the problem. Thus I have tested with the stock BIOS which is not Turbo Boost unlocked. I have also tested the restore on AC power loss function from the BIOS, it works as desired. The motherboard does not properly work if I enable a SATA RAID mode. It is possible to enable it, it is possible to configure it, but if I try to boot in such configuration, it simply hands. The postcode indicates V2 or 62 code, I don't know what it means, and probably it would be possible to fix this feature with a better BIOS, but right now it is what it is. I was not able to find something better for this motherboard at this moment of time. Another annoying thing is that Huanangi X99 TFQ refuses to start without a graphics card. It also refuses to start with a graphics card but without a monitor connected. Some extra test results when testing different CPUs. Xeon E5 2696v3 supports DDR4 and DDR3 memory. I was pleasantly surprised to figure out that Huanangi X99 TFQ supports DDR3 2133 speed. There are many different Chinese X99 motherboards that support DDR3 memory, but up until today only X99 TF and X99 T8 supported DDR3 2133. Other motherboards were limited to DDR3 1866. Now we also have X99 TFQ that also works with DDR3 2133. Regarding Turbo Boost, I have tried to use the Ultimate Patcher tool, which is able to produce BIOS with the Turbo Boost unlock and dynamic voltage, means you can adjust the voltage right in the BIOS and you don't have to make different BIOS options with different voltage reductions, but unfortunately it doesn't work. To be more precise, the Ultimate Patcher tool recognizes the BIOS and lets me make a modification, but if I try to use this BIOS, the motherboard turns into a brick. The system has with postcode 79. I was not able to solve this problem, that's why I have decided to use the good old S3 Turbo Tool method. I have made multiple different BIOS options with the different undervolting levels. All of these BIOS options are available in my Mi 899 application, thus if you would like to unlock Turbo Boost on your X99 TFQ motherboard, it is possible to do using a Mi 899 application with just a few mouse clicks. With Core i7-5820K, I have got the following results. As expected, no overclocking is possible with the desktop chipset, and the PCI Express routing is also not the best. The first PCI Express X16 slot is acting as PCI Express X8, the second one works as PCI Express X16, and the last one doesn't work. Core i7-5820K has only 28 PCI Express lanes, so that's why we have such limitations, but it would be nice to see that the first slot is actually working as PCI Express X16 and the second one acts as PCI Express X8. But Chinese are yet to figure out the proper PCI Express routing for their X99 motherboards. For the conclusion, I can say the following. Huanangi X99 TFQ is an interesting and probably decent motherboard, but unfortunately it is completely pointless due to its price. Right now it has been sold on AliExpress for about 130-160 euros and in my opinion this is completely outrageous. 
Sure, if you need these server features and you want to save some extra bucks by buying X99TFQ instead of X99TF, that might be an option. But in my opinion, if you're building a gaming PC, you're either going with LJ1200 and LJ1700 platform with Core i3, Core i5 CPU, or if you're very limited with your budget, then you're buying the cheapest X99 motherboard and Xeon EFI 2640 2666 V3. For the motherboard, I could recommend Machinist X99 MR9A motherboard. Review of this motherboard is of course available on my channel as well. And this is probably all I can tell about 100X99 TFQ, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational. Bye for now!